They say there are three cancers of the mind, comparing, complaining, and criticizing. I think we should add cash as the fourth one, and we have to make every effort to weed this cancer out of our mind. This goes not only for doctors, but for everyone. And for this, our motive should not be cash. It should be a higher principle, which is very nicely exemplified by the way the doctors work at Bhakti Vedanta. I now um, invite uh, IPS officer Mr. Gardke uh, onto the stage so he can introduce and invite Mr. Lakshmi Narayana for the next session. Friends, it's my proud privilege that I am standing here to introduce you the IIT chap and IPS officer of 1990 batch, V.V. Lakshmi Narayan sir. He has been recently promoted to the rank of second topmost rank of additional director general of the police. Presently, he is serving the Thane city to the rank of joint commissioner of police. He has completed his B.Tech from NIT Warangal and M.Tech in mechanical engineering from IIT Chennai. Previously, he has served as superintendent of police, Garchiroli, Nanded, and Pune. He served deputy instructor general to the anti-terrorism squad, Mumbai, and more importantly, as joint director in CBI. In CBI, he has investigated 2G spectrum and Satyam scam. In it, he brought the corrupt politicians to the justice. He is honored with many medals, such as Internal Security Medal by the Government of India, Hard Duty Medal by the State Government, and Police Medal for the Meritorious Service by the Government of India. Also, he is the recipient of Mahatma Gandhi Peace Award given by the State for maintenance of peace and communal harmony. He has worked with the ex-president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam of this nation. He is the active member of Lead India program started by the president himself in which he has interacted with more than 6 lakh youths. Kshati means pida or pain and Triya means protector. I would like to say that Kshatriya means the person who removes the pain of society. Daily basis, on daily basis, he attends more than 100 innocent civilians and solves their problem. I will be happy to say that he is the social doctor who checks the nerve of the social health and uh, keeps the society in the peace. So, without taking much time, I would like to introduce Vivi Lakshmanarayan sir to give his speech. Thank you. Before I start, I thank my parents for giving me birth in this great nation, Bharat, and imparting values to me in the childhood. I thank all my teachers, including Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, sir, for imparting wisdom to me so that the values imparted to me are not lost till today. I am extremely happy to be here with all of you because I always say, Doctors and police have similar role. You see a body and you decide what is the problem. I see the society and decide what is the problem. You have different ways of uh, treating the patient. Some patients you give them just tablets. To some patients you give injections. Some patients you take them to the ICU and you perform surgery. In the same manner, I had to decide what treatment is required to the society. I mean, as the previous speakers have uh, seen, and also a lot of emphasis on the ethics and uh, morals and also the spirituality. Every day I see the society and I get pained, the way the society is changing. On the 31st uh, night, I was doing my night round. I started visiting some of the few bars and I found college going students in the bars. It is the pathetic situation in the society. 
the whole ethical and moral values of the system, they are undergoing a sea change. And consumerism has crept in, in all relations, including the parents and the children, including the educational institutions, and also in all professions. That's why recently in the state of Uttar Pradesh, the Allahabad High Court has given a judgment saying that children of all politicians, the government servants and also the public servants and everybody should go to the government schools. Because education has become commercial everywhere. In the same way, many professions are becoming commercial. As far as my interaction with the doctors is concerned, of course, everybody has. And I met three doctors in my profession, I mean, when I was a student also, and later on in my profession. I mean, literally people used to see them as gods. The boy uh, belongs to a very small, um, I mean, very poor family. And Dr. Cherian told the parents, don't worry, I'll try my level best. Then after performing the surgery, he came out and he said, everything went off very well, your child is safe. I mean, I could see the gratitude in the eyes of the patient, parents. I mean, I could see as if the God has appeared before uh, them. I mean, this is what a God, living God I could see in the form of Mr. Cherry. The second doctor couple whom I have seen where the people in the area treat them like uh, gods. They are Dr. Prakash Amte and Dr. Mandakini Amte when I was serving in Gadchiroli district. In their Hemalkasa ashram, I met them several times. When they come out of the ashram or the institution or the Hemalkasa ashram, people just look at them as gods. The third doctor I met during my tenure is Dr. Sharad Kumar Dikshit, who used to do the plastic surgeries, I don't know what is the exact name. He also used to, these are the three people I met and clearly I see, I mean, there is always a god in a doctor. I mean, the same manner when I am serving in a society, People also expect that we also perform, we also do something to the society. So with the same uh, values and uh, morals, whatever is uh, taught to me, I am trying my level best to see that the agony of the people is solved to the extent possible. Now coming to the today's uh, topic, they told me to talk on this criminal negligence and role of police in medical legal cases. I addressed IMA Thane and IMA Ulasnagar also on this um, uh, issue. And I just uh, briefly say, because we come in confrontation when during such instances. And also many people think that the police is uh, taking action against them. So in this session, maybe in another five, six minutes, I'll just tell you what is the legal position as far as the medical legal cases are concerned. Yeah, the Supreme Court clearly said right to health is a fundamental right. But of course, they have uh, put the responsibility on the go government hospitals, nursing homes and polyclinics are liable to provide treatment to the best of their capacity to all the patients. The second thing is what is medical negligence? Absence of reasonable degree of care and skill of willful negligence of a medical practitioner in the treatment of a patient so as to lead to bodily injury or death of the patient. This is what is medical negligence. Negligence which leads to the injury or death of the patient. Now, there are two things. One is a civil negligence and the second one is a criminal negligence. I mean, what is civil negligence? When a patient in case of injury or a relative in case of death due to negligence file a suit in a civil court for the realization of compensation from the medical officer. He doesn't go to the criminal court, but he goes to a civil court and asks for the compensation. Then it is called civil negligence. What are the examples of civil negligence? Loss of earning of a patient, expenses incurred, a reduction of expectation of life, a reduced enjoyment of life, pain and suffering, loss of potency, death of patient. So all these things come under the civil negligence. So the patients or their relatives have a freedom to go to the civil court. Now coming to the criminal negligence, wherein the police and the doctors, we have a confrontation sometimes. So the thing is, when the medical practitioner exhibits gross lack of competency, this is very, very important. The term what the Supreme Court said is, it is the gross lack of competency. Gross inattention, 
criminal indifference to the patient's safety or gross negligence in the selection and application of remedies. So some of the examples we can always uh, quote, gross mismanagement of delivery of a woman, gross incompetent administration of a general anesthesia, administration of a wrong medicine into the eyes causing loss of vision, operation on a wrong limb, leaving instruments, tubes, sponges or swab in the abdomen, performing criminal abortions. So these are the things which come under this criminal negligence. So you have to make a distinction between the civil negligence and the criminal negligence. This is the area wherein if such things are found, then the doctor is liable to be booked. Can a doctor be booked both under civil and criminal liability? That is the another question which you can, will be asking. Yes, if there is an ordinary negligence, then generally people are dealt with in the civil law. If there is a gross negligence, then it comes under the criminal law also. Then what is the provision that is there in the Indian Penal Code? I mean, under what section of law the doctors can be booked? This is section 304A. It says causing death by negligence. Even the cases of accident also, road accidents also, which you see, they all come under this criminal uh, death by negligence. And the punishment that is prescribed is two years or with fine or with both. These are the punishments that are prescribed. Now there are several judgments of the Supreme Court which says that the treatment given by a doctor needs to be analyzed or needs to be seen. You, what is the expectation of a court is that whether an ordinary doctor also would have done the same procedure, that is the requirement. The courts never expect that you are a specialist in that particular area. It's like I give an example. Suppose if you go to a, uh, uh, you might have seen uh, the uh, uh, shops selling coal. If you go to the such shops, what is done is there is a big balance that is kept there. Then if you go and ask him a quintal of uh, coal, the fellow puts a quintal of weight here and keeps on putting coal here. A 40 kg here and there or a 10 kg here and there, it does not make a difference because he is dealing in huge quantities. If you go to a goldsmith's shop, you go to this Tanishka or some other shops here where their electronic balances are there, even a small milligram of gold makes a lot of difference for him and also for you also. If he loses a milligram, that fellow is looking, if you gain a milligram, you will be gaining. So it is seen in the um, goldsmith's balance is like that. But the courts have said, whenever you see or decide about the performance of a doctor or a professional, always do not do it under the goldsmith's balance, but always do as a coal shop balance where you have a 10 kg here and there does not make much difference. That means. During the postmortem, if you see, you can make out, always make out mistakes if you do it as a goldsmith's balance. That is what is the Supreme Court said. Now, some of the Supreme Court uh, judgments I would like to um, mention here. One is Suresh Gupta versus Government of Delhi, where the case is that whenever a patient died due to medical negligence, the doctor was liable in a civil law for paying compensation. Only when the negligence was so gross and his act was so reckless as to endanger the life of the patient, criminal law for offence under section 304A of the Indian Code, Penal Code will apply. Then another important famous judgment is the Jacob Matthew case, wherein it is said, to prosecute a medical professional for negligence under criminal law, it must be shown that the accused did something or failed to do which in the given facts and circumstances no medical professional in his ordinary senses and prudence would have done or failed to do. The hazard taken by the accused doctor should be of such a nature that the injury which resulted was most likely imminent. The another thing what they mentioned is about this Bolam test which all of you must have been taught during your uh, this thing. What I mentioned about the coal balance and the goldsmith balance that is what is the Bolam test which uh, says. 
where you get a situation which involves the use of some special skill or competence, then the test as to whether there has been negligence or not is not the test of the man on the top of the Clapham omnibus because he has not got the special skill. The test is the standard of the ordinary skilled man exercising and professing to have special skills. So this is what is the Balaam test and this is what uh, it is said. Then in the Jacob Matthew also they have the Supreme Court has given detailed guidelines to the police how to go about in a case. They said whenever there is a report of criminal negligence by a patient don't register the case immediately and don't do arrests of the doctors. It is very very clear. They said let the matter be referred to a body of doctors, maybe at a district level and subsequently at an appellate level. Then let those doctors go through the treatment given and come to a conclusion that there was a criminal negligence on the part of the doctor, then only you register the case. This is what it is. So that is to make you free from these tensions. When you perform your job, you do it in free mind and there is no compulsion or there is nothing that something will happen and I may be liable, that type of thing need not be there on the doctors. That we are making it very, very clear. So the procedure is quite elaborate and no criminal cases would be registered directly. Generally, the, what happens in the field is that the relatives of the patients, they come and do a lot of um, uh, this thing, they are seen, they create a scene in front of the hospitals. Sometimes the local politicians for whatever is the reasons, they also come and join them and create a problem to the doctors. So that's why what we did in Thane is that we formed a WhatsApp group. Dr. Vagle is here, he will bear me out. So all the doctors including myself and my DCPs, they are all members in the WhatsApp group. Whenever there is a problem, they immediately message us saying that there is something, immediately we go and help them. This is what is the thing we are practicing in Thane, Ulasnagar and everywhere also. Because many people, many people they are not clear. Many of the police officers also, they are not clear of what action needs to be taken. So we held some workshops also for all the police officers to tell them what is the latest law and what they should do and how it should be done. I think uh, elsewhere also if the same pr uh, procedure or things can be started, I mean you can uh, do your uh, profession without any tension. So same uh, this disorders uh, matter also. Then also Supreme Court uh, directions, I will uh, leave my presentation uh, here and you can see. And latest in the Lalita Kumari's judgment also, the state of UP, the Supreme Court said, in medical negligence cases, a preliminary inquiry may be made before registering a regular case. That is what it is there. So as far as the law is concerned and as far as the policing is concerned, it is very, very clear that no police station can register a case directly without referring the matter to a committee. After the decision of the committee, then only the criminal action will be started. So that is what is the um, uh, uh, position and also as far as the um, uh, law is concerned. And coming to the, uh, uh, I mean what I am seeing in the society as I was uh, mentioning, there is a, I mean as a doctor for the society, that means as a police, I always feel that the basic institutions which need to take care of the society, they are deteriorating. The first thing I always say it is the family. The second thing I say it is your school or the college. The third one I say it is the temple where you go. These are the three institutions which are supposed to take care of the behavior of an individual. Now all these three um, institutions are undergoing tremendous changes. The family system as, as I see as some of the speakers were also mentioning from the joint family we have moved to the nuclear families. So wherein it becomes very, very difficult to control the things because I come across so many children coming to me to my office and telling their problems. I see so many parents coming and telling me the problems that they are unable to control the children. So this is what is the first institution that is suffering. The second one is the school where I am going. Again, the commercialization has uh, taken place. As I said, it is only the marks, one of the, the professor, I think, Dr. Wok was mentioning here, it is only the uh, marks that are important, not the changes what the individual is undergoing. So this is another thing. So the third one is the spirituality which is supposed to have been imported by the uh, 
uh, temple or the religious institution. They are also going tremendous changes. So these three institutions, again, we have to bring them back. Because I am of the opinion, I always keep thinking that we should have a society without a police station. That is what is my expectation. On why do we need police stations in this society? Can't we do without a police station in this society? Why do we need, why do we need somebody to monitor our uh, behavior and all? That is the root cause. If we want to establish that, my, I always say the spirituality is very, very important. For every country, there is a USP. It is called unique selling proposition. I mean, this is the buzzword nowadays, you see, USP. If you go to United States of America and if you see what is USP of United States of America, they say it is the comfort of the citizens. Whatever decision the United States of America takes, they always take into consideration whether this particular legislation or the law is going to improve or is going to help my citizen. That is the USP of United States of America. If you go to United Kingdom, the USP of United Kingdom is that to maintain the prestige of the Queen. Whatever legislation they do, if you see, they see the authority of the Queen is maintained. If you talk about USP of India, the USP of India is spirituality. The moment you go away from this spirituality, the moment you go away from this uh, spirituality, what is happening in this country is because we are moving away from the spirituality. So the requirement is that we have to bring the spirituality back. What is spirituality? I mean, according to me, is doing your job with devotion. Seeing God in an individual who comes and meets you. This is what is simple terms of spirituality according to, it is my understanding of spirituality. The patient who comes to you is a God. God is sending you or God is coming in the form of a patient to you. A complainant coming to my police station or coming to meet me, if the God is coming in his form to test me. So if we think that is the spirituality level what we have, definitely the patient will be going, is going to go out with a lot of satisfaction, seeing God in you. And the complainant who comes to my police station also leaves the police station with a lot of satisfaction, seeing God in my officers. So this is what is the requirement of all of us. So at working level, if you can bring this spirituality in us and also in our staff, then I think definitely we'll be moving closer to our uh, spirituality. So Dr. Kalam sir always used to say, by the year 2020, we have to bring, build such an India that all the countries in the world sh should say a country is like, should be like India and a citizen should be like Indian. This is what is his uh, vision. So let's all come together. Uh, let's all come together and let us make this nation great. So nothing to worry. Police, I mean, you do your profession freely. Police is not um, there between you and you practice your profession. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lakshmanarayan, for that uh, enlightening speech. I think for doctors, the USP can be a unique service proposition. Now, um, hailing from, uh, I'm hailing from Andhra Pradesh, so many of you may not know uh, uh, about Sir. He's really been this hero in Andhra Pradesh who really weeds out the evil from our uh, state. Uh, so he's a legend, actually, in Andhra Pradesh. I really thank you for your uh, values. <laughs> and showing us the other side of the coin because as doctors we are so busy uh, practicing and providing healthcare that we often neglect or we are ignorant of the underlying legal aspects. So thank you for providing that. And uh, uh, I also thank you for emphasizing you know, spirituality because we rarely uh, get that from uh, lawyers or police officers especially. So he's an epitome of spiritual values and this really underlies the over overwhelming role of ethics in all walks of life. Uh, thank you so much. You. And uh, we will not take questions. Uh, he will come back for our panel discussion, so we will save questions for Mr. Lakshminarayan.